giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. So, with the auction obviously a hot topic at IRI, we also know that for many years IRI has been known to implement changes to enhance the gameplay at a higher level. Uh, this year there's a couple minor changes, including the 4 Robot Alliance, and then we also have the non Snake Vine style draft of 1 through 8, 1 through 8, and then 8 through 1, and then an additional 5 pounds of weight allowance. Uh, other things IRI announced is that teams are actually required to show two RF tags on their robot, uh, which will be used during the live webcast to both uh, identify the robots on screen. And you also know that the well-loved mentor matches are going to be returning. Uh, but, you know, for the main concept of how Destination Deep Space plays, IRI has decided to not change the gameplay rules. So, Ben, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on the IRI committee not changing any gameplay rules? And is there anything you would have liked to see play? Yeah, I think there are a couple of things we could have done. I think some of the foul rules could have been modified, maybe. I'm not sure that hatch throwing really ended up being being a thing or a problem in the regular season. There's already a rule for throwing game pieces outside of the field. So I think they could have loosened that from the yellow card. I think that we could have... Um, done some stuff with robots dropping out of the frame perimeter when dead on the other side of the field and all the penalties that, that caused. Um, and I think from just elevating the game, it would have been fun to make it so teams could add an extra hatch panel in during Sandstorm. That way, multiple, like three different teams could do two hatch autos. Okay, that be, yeah, you're right. I think that'd be really interesting to see how, especially with Sandstorm, like starting at the top, how that changes the rest of the game. Uh, next, we're going over to Tyler. What about you? Uh, so for me, I would have liked to see, uh, something change with the, uh, RP, uh, potentially for like maybe, uh, to me, I think destination D space could have been greatly enhanced by maybe some sort of safe zone by the uh, rocket. If we want to see higher scoring, I really like that concept, uh, or, uh, changing maybe something with autonomous. I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of, uh, uh, for me, I, I think there's subtle tweaks that could have been made. I would like to see maybe even both rockets be required for the uh, two RPs. I don't know if that's too much. I think if you would have added uh, protected zones, you could get away with something like that. So I uh, would have liked to see maybe a little more emphasis on offense at IRI, and that's what I, I feel it's missing just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I could definitely see how that would come into play. Uh, Justin, how about you? Uh, yeah, it's just going, kind of going with Tower. So it would have been interesting if they did a RP per rocket. So there would be um, maybe a little more incentive for teams to work on rockets instead of the kind of, you know, two robots kind of play, work for one RP and one plays defense, something along those lines. But I'm actually not super surprised they didn't change a whole lot. Uh, I thought the game was, for what it, you know, for what they could realistically change without upsetting too many teams, I think leaving it alone is probably okay. But the RF tags, I do want to talk about that because that's really cool. Um, I think it's kind of part of the future of what we're going to start seeing in FRC. Uh, we were at the... 3015 were at the Long Island Regional, and they had some really cool analytics that were available for teams based on the RF tags that were on the robot. They they showed you like a hotspot map of where your team spent the most time. They give you your max speed, your average speed, so all sorts of cool stuff based on those RF tags. So I'm interested to see what they're going to have uh, as far as the live webcast goes, and if any of those advanced metrics will be available um, for the teams there as well. But it'll be cool to keep an eye on. Okay, cool. And Christine? Yeah, I uh, honestly... I, I don't know. I think it'll be fine the way that the game has been played. Um, if anything, teams can kind of brag like, oh, we won IRI and we're the best team. And the rules really weren't changed all that much. So I'm interested to see this RF tag stuff being a very non-technical person. I really don't know a whole lot about it. So it should be cool to see, you know, what it ends up doing. So, yeah, honestly, I don't really know the, the rules of the game until, like, way later in the season. So I'll probably be refreshing them in my own mind watching IRI this weekend. That's totally fair. I think the only thing that you really could do, personally, without changing the aspects of how the game is meant to really be played, is different point levels for different levels of, you know, scoring higher on the rocket, scoring uh, level 2 versus level 3. Uh, but even then, not sure how much I'd really change that. And... Um, Something probably with doing a point bonus for an RP and a limbs, because that's the one thing that kind of gets lost between the two. Uh, but other than that, I don't think that's a huge way of how the game is played. Uh, it could be interesting, but, you know, other than that, I think instead of dwelling on that, maybe let's just talk about who's going to be on the field. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. 
You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.